gonna talk about a few little quirks that I have found on this mule. Just a few, uh, nothing real major, but one of them is a little bit major, and I think owners of some of the newer SXs uh, are gonna to wanna to know about it. But first, let's talk about the rattle that I had on this thing in my first video. I have found out what it was. I have not found a fix for it yet. The rattle is absolutely coming from this right here. This is the seatbelt box. This is where the seatbelt's got a spring in there and it cools up. <clears throat> There's a little bracket in there that helps lock the seatbelt upon uh, harsh bumps, wreck, whatever. And that bracket has a little piece of metal that flaps like this. And if it uh, flaps the right way, it locks the seatbelt up. And since it moves, it actually vibrates in there, and that's where a lot of my rattling is coming from, and it's on the other side too. Now, this is very easy to take off, this whole box. There's just one bolt, uh, one bolt and then two tabs on the back of this plastic cover, and it comes right off, and you've got the full seat belt assembly exposed. And I have tried to put grease on that little piece that's loose. The, the grease did not work, and... What I did find that did work was I put a piece of paper towel that I kind of folded up just enough uh, and I closed this piece of plastic over it with the paper towel between the plastic cover and that piece that's vibrating. And the idea was to put just enough pressure on there to keep it from rattling. But what I found was that even though it did fix the rattling, my seatbelt no longer locked. You can hear it in there now. Hear that? Hear that clunk, clunk, clunk? That's the piece in there. That's that piece camming left and right as this goes in and out. That's the rattle. That's what you want to get fixed somehow. Now, there probably is a, a way to fix it, uh, I'll, but, but I'll just have to play around with sticking different things in here. Something that is uh, <clears throat> enough to keep it from vibrating, but enough to let it cam so that it locks the belt when it needs to. Yeah, but how did you find out that that's where the rattle's coming from? How do you know that the seat belt is the issue? Well, that's simple. As I'm going down the road, I hear the rattle. As I'm hitting bumps, it was making my belt lock up just like that. I noticed that when the belt locked up, the rattle went away. This is repeatable by the fact that I can reach down and pull the belt into the lock position. And every time I do that, the rattle goes away. So that is how I pinpointed that the rattle it's coming from the seat belt. Quirk number two. For this one, I got to get underneath to show you guys. Underneath your SX. Underneath your SX is a little oil catch can. See that little white thing right there with the little clear drain plug at the bottom? See how mine's got something in it? That's oil. This is an oil catch can, and I kind of think only the newer models have it. And I think it has to do with the, the recall on the FX models of Mule. They had a recall because there was a breather tube in there. They would get water in it. The water would freeze, cause a blockage, pressure spikes, oil fill cap would blow off, oil everywhere, potential fire hazard. <laughs> and uh, their fix to it was to put an oil catch can in there. I think they went ahead and did an oil catch can on these and the 4010s, because somebody was asking me about that the other day too. Uh, it's not a big deal, but you saw that my drain plug had oil in it. Well, this thing was actually leaking oil in my garage the other day. It did it. Two different times i was watching it to because i couldn't believe that a brand new mule would leak oil but uh so i let it go for a couple days just to see if if my eyes weren't deceiving me but it for sure enough was leaking oil and uh the reason is because that drain plug under that catch can was full and it was leaking oil and it was also had a lot of water in it and so uh got on a Facebook uh, mule group and uh, somebody said that that's normal and that it's in your manual. I thought that was absolute BS, but sure enough, I looked it up. It is. It's absolutely normal. Uh, it says in the manual that you've got to uh, 
drain that every now and then and uh, drain it of oil, water, whatever's in there. So I was kind of irritated by that, but at least I know there's nothing wrong with the mule that it's working as, uh, as intended. And I guess that's better than having all that water and oil go back in through the intake anyway. So, uh, whatever, it's just have to just watch out for it in the future. And anybody buying a newer mule, I'm going to guess 19 or 20 modeling up, uh, you should probably be checking it out too. You should at least be aware of it. But as I said, it's somebody on a, that same group had the exact same problem with his 4010 and come to find out his had a catch can too. So I think this is mule wide. They have that now. Uh, they don't talk about it, but it is in the manual if you look it up. Quark number three. This one's real easy, guys. A lot of times I have found that when I come to a stop, whether I'm in low, high, whatever, going into neutral, sometimes it doesn't want to do it, even in from reverse to neutral. It doesn't want to go into gear. If this happens to you, what you can do, give it just a little bit of gas, just enough to get the RPMs moving, maybe 100 RPM or so, just enough to get it moving. And uh, as you do that, as you pull down, or push up whatever and it will pop into neutral not that big a deal but it is a little bit of a quirk uh my dad let his sit for about a week without using it because he didn't know how to get it into neutral and uh here's a bonus quirk he didn't know that you can start these in gear by pressing the brake so if you ever run into a problem where you can't get it in gear or you've killed it in gear can't get it into neutral to start it just hit the brake and if you're running and you can't get it into neutral, give it a little bit of gas. It'll go right in. Today's self-protection is brought to you by Taurus and a 444 Ultralight and Azula holsters. This holster, I just got it off Amazon, is about $60. They're made in South Africa. It seems to be pretty well built. Um, this gun is still extremely huge to carry, as you can see it. Pro you can probably tell it prints pretty bad under this t-shirt but we're out here in the woods which is exactly where it is. so that's it for today guys i decided to go over a few quirks that i have found in my short time with the mule i've had it about a month now i still really like it it's still climbing real good and doing everything i need it to do and uh i'm sure there's going to be a lot more videos to follow if you don't mind i'm now going to go get a haircut and uh, get inside where it's a little bit cooler we'll catch you later all right Out of here for people seeing you doing this shit.